Hey, what's up? In this video, I'm gonna go over all the automations and explain how I set each one of them up. And even if you're not gonna set up every automation, there should be a lot of tips and helpful information that should apply to other automations in your house. So hopefully you get something out of this video. And a quick update, you've probably noticed I haven't posted a whole lot lately. My kids came home with the flu and gave it to me and it's been terrible. Luckily, Allie did not get it or the baby, but it seriously sucked all the energy out of me. So I apologize for not posting a whole lot lately. I will be posting a lot more soon, including CES, which I'm very excited about. All right, for the first automation, it's with the bathroom blinds. And to just open them in the morning and close them at night, technically you could just use the SwitchBot app, but I'm using SmartThings for this since the SwitchBot blind tilt does connect to SmartThings. And I wanted to keep all my automations kind of grouped together. So for the morning at 7 a.m., it opens up the blinds. And then at 5 p.m., the blinds close. Pretty simple. I mean, these are really, really basic automations. But now when the shower is turned on, I'm using Casa for both the vent fan and the light. So whenever you the shower light turns on, then it closes the blinds. And it only does it from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. because that's the only time the blinds are open during the day. If it's at night, you're showering at night, you wouldn't need to close them or open them or anything like that. So I have that condition on both opening and closing the blinds. So all that is handled in smart things. The blinds, I don't think they really connect well with Home Assistant right now, even with Smart Things. So I'm just doing everything through Smart Things for this one. But for all the light strip stuff, that is with Home Assistant. And let me show you that. Okay, for the Home Assistant automation part of this, it's very similar to the other one. It might look long and, you know, kind of complex, but it's pretty simple. Basically, there's two triggers or there's two optional triggers, either the fan if that turns on or the ceiling light. If either one of those turns on for the shower, then this will trigger this automation. And then I have a time condition, and this is not really necessary, but basically I shower during the day and my wife showers at night. I didn't want this running for my wife because she might shower longer and all those lights turning on. Didn't wanna bother her with it, so this runs during the day only for me. Now, this looks like a lot of stuff, but it's really pretty simple. This first one starts up a Alexa routine. I'm using the Alexa media player, and this is super useful. I use this all the time. It's basically how I connect my home assistant to my Echo devices. So this just calls a routine called random shuffle and if you're looking at the Alexa routines, the name is Random Shuffle. And that's how Home Assistant knows to talk to this one. And this just runs a custom command, Shuffle Random Songs Playlist on Spotify. This works out pretty well. And if you're looking at it, and you're like, why is it kitchen dot? This dot used to be in my kitchen and now it's in the bathroom. There's another thing in my kitchen. so. Yeah, all my dots sometimes move around to different rooms and the names never really get updated. So now there is a weird workaround that I had to do with my light strip. So there's a two minute delay. That's just like a bunch of delays for changing the different lights. But to initially turn the lights green, these light strips, the when I was turning them green, the white LEDs were not turning off. And I had to do this workaround where I would run the light turn on service and then I would select white and put it at zero and brightness at one percent so when I did this that would turn off the white LEDs and then I put a short delay for two seconds and then turn the lights to green and this is again that light turn on service turn the colors to green brightness at 100 percent and this was working great and I don't understand why I need to do this. I don't always need to do this for my other light strips. These ones have that custom controller and all that stuff. So anyways, there's a delay for four minutes and they turn orange, another delay for two minutes, then red. So you can see there's just a bunch of delays that changes the color and it's just kind of the same thing over and over again. 
All right, now for turning on the lights in the front entryway using the front door, you could really use almost any system for this because I'm using the ring contact sensor and that integrates really well with like Amazon routines. So you could just say when that door opens, turn on the light. And I am using Home Assistant for this and I'm using MQ MQTT to connect ring to Home Assistant. And I'll link this guide on how to do it because I use it multiple times in this video and it works really, really well. So basically for Home Assistant, I'm running a trigger for a state change when it goes off to on. So that means when the door is open and then there's a time condition from 5 p.m. to 12 a.m. So anytime in the evening when the lights would kind of need to be on, that's when this will run and it just turns on the lights, just calls the lights turn on and turns on those two light switches. So I have Lutron light switches, but you could really use anything. All right, now for the notification to skip the automation, you need two automations for this. One for the notification and the second is to skip the automation. So for this first one, this is just the notification. Basically when all our phones are not home, if they've actually been away for one minute, then this will run. Then it runs a script that sends my phone a notification. Now I created a little like notification script shell that I can just pass it information. And that way, if I ever switch my phones, I don't have to redo all my automations. They all point to the same script and I'll only have to update that one script. That's why it says Android, even though I'm using an iPhone. So all this does is calls the service notify and then my phone name and then it passes in the message title reply button title. So that's the actionable notification where there's a button that you can press on the notification. So I recommend using something like this notification shell so that if you ever do switch phones, it's just really easy. All I have to do is change this little thing right here and then all my notifications will be updated on my on my phone so but i recommend using better naming conventions than, than i used so that just passed in a few things to that script and that sends a notification to my phone and then when i click on the button there is a trigger mobile app notification action with the action skip away mode so that's from the previous notification skip away mode that reply event when you click on the button, that reply event little ID is sent to Home Assistant and Home Assistant is listening for it. And then if there is a trigger with skip away mode, it will call this automation. So the action is it just turns on an input Boolean to true. And if you want to know how to set up input Booleans, if you go into settings, there's the helpers and you can create input Booleans. So that will turn on that input boolean and then when all the phones are away and the house is about to go in away mode it will look for that input boolean so all the phones have been away for two minutes so now it's been one minute since i got that notification and the conditions are that skip away mode input boolean is off so if i clicked on that button then it will be on so it will skip this whole automation, all the actions, it will not run. All right, for playing music in the family room, all I'm using is an Amazon routine for this. It's being triggered by a Hue motion sensor that's integrated to Amazon. And the reason for that is I didn't want music just to start playing every evening in case we weren't home or if we were in a different room, like watching a movie or something like that. I didn't want music to randomly just start playing if no one was in there. So that's why it's triggered by a motion sensor and then there's the time of day and it is active between 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. so kind of when we're eating dinner and everything and then it suppresses for six hours and this is important because if I didn't have this last thing every time the motion sensor was triggered it would rerun this automation and start uh, playing music again so it would cut out from the middle of the song start up again you don't want that. So basically it only runs one time per day because it can only run once every six hours, but it can only run from five to 6 p.m. basically once a day. 
and then it just sets the volume to a five and then it runs a custom command shuffle classical piano playlist on Spotify. So uh, we used to have it playing a Christmas playlist, but now it runs classical music and I love it. All right, for the garage lights turning on automation, like I mentioned in the video, there are six different ways that it can turn on. So if you look at the automation, there are six different triggers, one for each garage door, one for each door with the ring contact sensor, and then two motion sensors. I'm using the Innovelli motion sensor, which doesn't have a whole lot of range, but I like because you can just plug it into power. You don't have to worry about batteries. And then I'm using a Cara motion sensor that works really well. So either one of these things will trigger the lights to turn on. So there's just two smart outlets that will turn on those LED lights on the ceiling, and then it starts a timer. Now this timer is just an input helper that you can do in the settings of Home Assistant. And you can select timer, and then you give it like a default time. I put 10 minutes, felt like that was a good amount of time for making sure that no one was still in the garage. And so if you ever reset the timer or whatever, it just goes right back to 10 minutes. So this just calls the service start timer and starts up that timer. So turning on the lights, that's pretty easy but turning them off when no one's in there, this is the little more tricky part. And there are three different triggers for this. One is when the timer runs out. So when it goes to idle, that will trigger this automation or when either motion sensor stops detecting motion will trigger it. And the reason for that is that I found that if I'm standing in front of the workbench and there's a motion sensor right in front of me, and it's still detecting me, say I don't move for 10 minutes, I'm working on something, that 10 minutes can run out, but the motion sensor is still seeing me because when the motion sensor stops detecting you and detects you again, that's when the timer gets reset. But if it's still seeing you the whole time, then that won't reset the timer. So once the motion sensor stops seeing me, that will also trigger this, but, the conditions are if both motion sensors are not detecting anyone and the timer is run out. As I mentioned in the video, you could do this whole thing without a timer and just adding six different conditions. You could just say condition if each door has been closed for 10 minutes and each motion sensor has not detected anyone for 10 minutes, then turn off the lights. And that, and that would work fine. The problem with that is if one of the sensors goes offline for a little bit and it messes it up. The timer is a little bit more reliable for turning off the lights and it's less messy. It's easy to visualize with the timer and everything, less conditions. All right, now for the automation to remind me to plug in the Tesla, I connected that Tesla charger. It, I think it there was like a native integration. It was really easy to set up. And for the trigger, I'm just using that ring contact sensor on the door for when it opens. Basically, if I'm heading out into the garage, it will trigger this automation. It has to make sure that wall connector is unplugged. And then it makes sure that my phone is connected to the Wi-Fi because if I'm in the car out like at the store or something and my wife goes out into the garage, I don't wanna annoy her telling her to plug in the Tesla if it's not even there to be plugged in. So double checks to make sure that I'm home. And then it only runs at night from 9 p.m. to 12 a.m. And that's when I don't have peak pricing. It's the least expensive to plug in and all of that. And then there's a template condition. And I use this thing all the time. It's kind of like a complicated way just to make sure that the automation only runs once per day. So this one, run, it makes sure that it hasn't run in the last six hours or 21,600 seconds. And I'll, I'll put an example of this that you can swap out. Basically, all you have to do is swap out the ID of the automation in a couple spots, and then it will make sure that that automation hasn't run. Because I don't want this running every single time I go out in the garage. If I don't want to plug it in, I only be reminded once. It sets the volume on the dot to four, like 40%, because I don't want to scare myself. If it was like full on 100%, that might scare me in the middle of the night. And then it does a little notification, a TTS 
command or whatever to the Echo. You can make the Echo say whatever you want from Home Assistant, again, using the Alexa Media Player. All right, now for the automation to remind myself to pick up my kid from school. This one seems simple on the surface, but there's actually a couple little tricky parts about it. So looking at it, you'll notice that the automation is disabled because my little girl is not in school right now. They're on break. And so I'll re-enable it once school is back in session. But there's two different triggers because she gets out normally at a certain time, but on Wednesday, they get out early. So instead of making two automations for this, I just have one. There's two time conditions. So basically, if it's not Wednesday, it checks to make sure that it's between this little time frame and then it's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, or Friday. So only on Wednesday is it the early time. So if you wanted to run the same automation different times on different days of the week, then this is a way that you can do it. There's also a condition to check if the garage door has been closed for 10 minutes. It has to see if both the main garage door and the small garage door have been closed for 10 minutes because if one of them had been open recently to go pick her up, then there's no need to be reminded. And then I have an Alexa Media Player action that runs a routine with the ID Pickup Kid. And so that's just the name of the routine Pickup Kid. And that announces on a bunch of the Echo devices around my house to go pick up our kid from school. Now for the automation that turns on the light when the garage door is open and turns the light off when it's closed. There's two automations for this. The first one, there's two triggers. If either garage door opens, it will turn on that little light on the motion sensor. I mean, you could use any smart light for this. I'm just using this one because it's small. It's not really annoying or anything like that. It's still easy to see. So that's why I'm using this light. But turning it off is a little more tricky. The trigger is either garage door goes to a state of close. And I'm using MyQ garage doors for this. They were installed by our builder, but you could use really anything, a little sensor on the door or anything for your garage doors to know if it's been open or closed. And then if either garage door turns into the state of closed, there's also another condition to make sure that both garage doors are closed. Because if you didn't have these conditions, if both garage doors were open and you just closed the main one, then in the second one was still open, the light would turn off. So you only want to turn off the light if both garage doors are closed. The conditions, make sure that that happens and then it just turns off the little smart light. All right, now for the automation where I get into bed and it lets me know on the Echo if any of the doors around the house are still open and which ones they are. So this gets triggered by the Withing sleep sensor underneath my mattress. If I lay in bed, that is a state change to on. And then there's a condition to make sure this is only from 10 p.m. to 12 a.m. And then there's a template condition to make sure that this automation only runs once because I don't want it to be notifying me every time I get into bed. Uh, if I want to leave the door open for some reason, then I could, but just to make sure. Now, this is where it gets a little, little more difficult. So it's using the Alexa Media Player to send a message to be played on an Echo. Now to do that, it's pretty simple, but I'm building out what it should say using a Home Assistant template. So this part, the message, this is going to be dynamic. This could be whatever door is open, it's going to use this code figure out which door, build out the message, and then say it on the echo. So there's a for loop and it goes through the binary sensor states and it checks to see if it matches any of those uh, ring contact sensor doors. So the back door, garage door, front door, you know, all those ones. And if those are true, then it will say that the name of the contact sensor and it'll say the back door left is open or the front door is open. It will read it off when it gets to this part right here because it will say the state name, which is like the name of the contact sensor. Same thing with the garage doors. It will check the garage door. The main one, if it is, it'll say the main garage door is open. If the small one is open, 
then it will say the small garage door is open. So I think this is a really useful because you can use this template to loop through a bunch of sensors and make sure they're in the state that you expect them to be. All right, there you go. That's how I set up all the automations. I know some of them were a little easier than others, but hopefully this was helpful. And getting ready to go to CES, I'm gonna hopefully put some extra content about CES on this channel. So keep an eye out for that. Thanks for watching.